Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna tell you about 20 amazing Python libraries that you should know about in 2024. So the first one in the list is the scikit-learn. Scikit-learn, also known as sklearn, is a Python library to implement machine learning models and statistical modeling. Through scikit-learn, we can implement various machine learning models for regression, classification, clustering, and statistical tools for analyzing these models. It also provides functionality for dimensionality reduction, feature selection, feature extraction, ensemble techniques, and inbuilt datasets. This library is actually built upon NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. On number two, we have the Fast API. FastAPI is a Python-based web framework that allows you to develop fast web APIs. FastAPI's primary purpose is to build API endpoints. This can be done as efficiently as returning Python dictionary data in JSON or using OpenAI's interactive Swagger UI. FastAPI does not limit itself to APIs. It can be used for almost everything a web framework does, from delivering web pages within the Jinja 2 template engine to serving WebSocket-powered applications. On number three, we have RAM. It is a Python library that is used for the rapid prototyping of machine learning models. RAM provides a simple, declarative syntax for exploring features, algorithms, and transformations. It is a lightweight Pandas-based machine learning framework and can be used seamlessly with existing Python machine learning and statistical tools. On number four, we have NumPy. When it comes to scientific computing, NumPy is one of the fundamental packages for Python providing support for large multidimensional arrays and matrices along with the collection of high-level mathematical functions to execute these functionalities swiftly. NumPy relies on BLAST and LAPEC for efficient linear algebra computations. NumPy can also be used as an efficient multidimensional container of generic data. On number 5, we have TensorFlow. TensorFlow is an open-source software library for high-performance numerical computations. It is an iconic math library and is also used for Python in machine learning and deep learning algorithms. TensorFlow was developed by the researchers at the Google Brain team within the Google AI organization. Today, it is being used by researchers for machine learning algorithms and by physicists for complex mathematical computations. On number 6, we have PyTorch. PyTorch is a Python package that gives the user a blend of two high-level features. First one is the tensor computation with strong GPU acceleration, and the second one is the development of deep neural networks on a tape-based autodiff system. PyTorch provides a great platform to execute deep learning models with increased flexibility and speed built to be integrated deeply with Python. On number 7, we have Pandas. The Pandas library enables the provision of easy data structure and quicker data analysis for Python. For operations like data analysis and modeling, Pandas make it possible to carry these out without needing to switch to a more domain-specific language like R. In simple words, Pandas is mostly used for data analysis and manipulation. On number 8, we have Matplotlib. All the libraries that we have discussed are capable of a number of numeric operations, but when it comes to dimensional plotting, then Matplotlib steals the show. This open source library in Python is widely used for publishing quality figures in various hard copy formats and interactive environments across platforms. You can design charts, graphs, pie charts, scatter plots, histograms, error charts, etc. with just a few lines of code using Matplotlib. On number 9, we have SymPy. For all the symbolic mathematics, SymPy is the answer. This Python library for symbolic mathematics is an efficient aid for computer algebra systems while keeping the code as simple as possible to be comprehensible and easily extensible. SymPy is written in Python only and can be embedded in other applications and extended with custom functions. On number 10, we have Seaborn. When it comes to the visualization of statistical models like Heatmap, Seaborn is among the reliable sources. This Python library is derived from Matplotlib and is closely integrated with Pandas data structure. Seaborn helps you explore and understand your data. Its plotting functions operate on data frames and arrays containing whole data sets and internally performs the necessary semantic mapping and statistical aggregation to produce informative plots. On number 11, we have the AsyncQ. AsyncQ is a Python library that is used to write concurrent code with async and await syntax. 
It is used primarily in input output bound tasks such as web page development or fetching data from the APIs. For anyone dealing with asynchronous operations, especially in the context of IO bound and high level structured network code, AsyncQ is extremely awesome for them. It helps many thousands of connections simultaneously without the overhead of creating new threads. On number 12, we have Tkinter. It is a Python library that can be used to construct basic graphical user interface applications. This Python framework provides an interface to the TK toolkit and works as a thin object-oriented layer on top of TK. The TK toolkit is a cross-platform collection of graphical control elements, also known as the widgets for building application interfaces. On number 13, we have Pygame. Pygame is a cross-platform set of Python modules designed for writing video games. It includes computer graphics and sound libraries designed to be used with the Python programming language. It actually facilitates the development of video games and multimedia applications in Python. Another aspect of Pygame that I find incredibly useful is its active community and wealth of learning resources. Whether it's tutorials, sample code, or forum discussions, there is always support available which is incredibly valuable when you are learning or troubleshooting. On number 14, we have Pillow. It is a powerful user-friendly library for image processing in Python and is built on top of PIL, which is the Python image library. Pillow is ideal for simplifying complex image operations from basic editing to more advanced manipulations, making it perfect for a wide range of applications. Its extensive file format support and efficient image processing capabilities are very impressive. So if you are either creating filters, enhancing images, or handling different file formats, Pillows is your best option to use. On number 15, we have Kiwi. It is a free and open source Python framework for developing mobile apps and other multi-touch application softwares with a natural user interface. It is distributed under the terms of the MIT license and can run on Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, and Windows. In a world where interactive and touch-based applications are becoming the norm, KV offers the tools to create responsive and engaging user experiences. Its novel approach to handling inputs and gestures make it ideal for developing modern touch-enabled applications. On number 16, we have Bouquet. It is a Python library that is used to make highly interactive and appealing graphs and visualizations. This is done in Bouquet using HTML and JavaScript. This makes it a powerful tool for creating projects, custom charts, and web design-based applications. Bouquet provides functionalities to create dynamic and interactive graphics that can engage users on a deeper level. Whether it's a dashboard, data analysis tools, or complex data visualizing applications, Bouquet handles it with finesse. On number 17, we have OpenCV. Open source computer vision or OpenCV library is used for image processing. It is a Python package that monitors overall functions focused on instant computer vision. OpenCV provides several inbuilt functions. With the help of this, you can learn computer visions. It allows both to read and write images at the same time. Objects such as faces, trees, etc. can be diagnosed in any video or image using OpenCV. It is compatible with Windows, OS X, and other operating systems. On number 18, we have SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy is a database abstraction library for Python that comes with astounding support for a range of databases and layouts. It provides consistent patterns, is easy to understand, and can be used by beginners too. It improves the speed of communication between Python language and databases and supports most platforms such as Python 2.5, Jython and PyPy. Using SQL Alchemy, you can develop database schemas from scratch. On number 19, we have Request. The Request library streamlines HTTP requests for easy and efficient web communication in Python. It enables you to send HTTP requests and include headers, form data, multi-part files, and parameters using basic Python dictionaries. Similarly, it also enables you to retrieve the answer data. And last but not the least, we have the SciPy library. It enhances scientific computing by providing advanced mathematical functions and algorithms in Python. SciPy is an integral part of the projects that delve into scientific computing. It is built on NumPy and extends it by adding a range of helpful algorithms and commands that we can use for data analysis and manipulation. It provides a comprehensive set of modules for optimization, linear algebra, integration, interpolation, special functions, FFT, signal and image processing, ODE solvers, and much more.
And that's a wrap on our journey through the 20 Python libraries you absolutely need to know about in 2024. I hope you enjoyed exploring these incredible tools as much as I did. Thank you.